Danse, kita tam skat na wow kakiao. Hello, welcome everyone. You are listening to As Long as the River Flows, a Keepers of the Water podcast. I'm Jesse Cardinal, Executive Director in Treaty Six Territory. This episode, amazing and wonderful Daffy Puyak and Jeff Westesigut will share teachings on the bear, Musqua. First up, Daffy Puyak, a Nakota Cree traditional teacher and cultural advisor from Sweetgrass First Nation in Treaty 6. She has worked as a professional educator in cultural education and land-based learning. Her passion remains to her roots. She hosts traditional survival camps in her own community. She's been taught the tradition of storytelling and healing from a very early age and continues this practice of traditional healing and wellness today. When I was a little kid, my grandparents um, taught me about the creation stories, but the creation stories are much more. The creation stories, they teach you about natural law. They teach you about also who holds the natural law. So what I didn't really understand too much about it when I was a kid. My grandparents talked about the creation stories and um, they also spoke about like a gift that and a natural law that Creator and Mother Earth had given to each of their children because they had a big family, they had a big home. They gave each of their children um, a gift but it was much more than just a gift. They held a piece of natural law. So their duty was to carry the certain laws. So one of the things that the, the bears were asked to carry was they were asked to carry the laws of child rearing. The first male and female bears, the creator asked them, gave them a gift, but also that gift to use that gift and to apply that gift was also to carry and to bring natural law. So their gift was to carry the laws of how you raise your children, to watch the bears when it comes to raising our children, how they raise their young, how they discipline them. And, you know, um, a lot of times my grandparents, they told me these stories, but when I got older, I ended up learning more about it because a story, uh, our natural laws, they're not very long. Uh, the stories are simple. And they're also uh, very easy to understand. But with that simple story, it's a long, long teaching. It's not um, uh, something that you just hear about and then you understand it. You have to go through it within your own life, within your own family, your own home, your own children. So in the very beginning of time, when Creator and Mother Earth, when they had their children, the earth was barren. There was nothing on the earth. There was just Mother Earth. The center of the earth, that fire, is her heart, Iskutel. And the stone, the rock that protects her heart is her ribcage. It's her bones. It protects her, her heart and the love that she has of a mother, the warmth that a mother carries. And the rivers, the underground rivers, the water is her blood. The, the dirt, the soil is Mother Earth's skin. My Gugum and Muslim, they were telling me that in that time, there was nothing on the earth, not even grass, not even a butterfly, not even a worm, nothing. And uh, no animals, no birds, nothing. And when Mother Earth gave birth to her children, her children were beings of light. Every light was exactly the same size. And the creator said, our children should have a physical form. And so he reached down and he grabbed the dirt and the soil from all different places all around the world. So Mother Earth, her skin is different colors, just like us. So Creator grabbed different soil from all over the world. And just like Plato, he started to make these physical forms. And he put them all in one place. Then they called their children. They were beings of light. And he said, pick one, pick one. So these children came and they were all beings of light. Uh, They were so excited. So those children said, I want to be a butterfly. I want to be a bear. I want to be a fish. I want to be the grass. I want to be a flower. I want to be a worm. I want to be a bird. I want to be a tree. So they put their physical form on. And um, after they were all done, it's such a long story. It's like a really, really long story. There's so many parts to it, but I'm trying to just 
um, uh, say it as simple as possible. So after everybody got their physical form, the creator and mother earth said, we we have to give our kids a job. The very first born, when he, they gave birth to these first, first born children, they, when they gave them that physical body, their physical body, he also told them, you are going to have eternal life. So the very first male and female bear were given eternal life. So everything that was first born, but once their physical body uh, no longer was able to work, they got sent up into the stars. In that time, there wasn't even stars. And so it was the firstborn children who became the stars. And they talk about the, like, we have our own constellations, the constellations of, um, like, the bear. Our um, Sundance Lodges, we have 14 poles. And each of those 14 Ys, their, their Y poles, they all point to a different constellation in the star. So one of those uh, constellations in the stars is the bear. So in the Sundance Lodge, there's 14 main poles, and those are the 14 main law carriers that we follow on this land, Turtle Island. There's many laws, many more. But, and uh, so one of those main poles in the Sundance Lodge, it points to the constellation of the bear. These are the ones that carry the loss of our child rearing. So when we have problems with our children, raising our children, we're, we're supposed to make offerings to the grandmother and the grandfather bear and tell them I'm having a hard time um, with my children and talk about everything as though you were talking to uh, you know, another human being, as though you're talking to a counselor. So you speak to them about all of the problems you're having raising your children and you offer them tobacco and you offer them like fish and berries and you ask them that they help you in Creator and Mother Earth's loving way. You ask them that they work with Creator and Mother Earth's love to help you to learn, to help you to grow and to help you to understand what it means to be a parent. And we take a look at the bear. When the mother bear, when those babies get to a certain age, she gets rough with her children too. And, and we were told to follow when raising our children, to try to teach them. And that's important, a port, important part. Love is, is about, is very important when raising your children, but discipline is also very important. We need to, um, the elders say that, let's say you can also tell about the year and about the harvest, like the harvest of berries and medicine. So let's say, if uh, the female bears only have one baby, that means it's not going to be abundant in the berries and the wild game. So you have to be extra careful when the bears only have one baby. Let's say there's a year where there's a lot of female bears and they have uh, two or three or four babies. That means it's going to be very abundant. There's going to be a lot of berries. There's going to be a lot of fish and a lot of wild game. But they say if the bears only, the female bears only have one, then you got to get ready and you got to work extra hard that year to gather and to collect um, your food. Thank you, Daffy. Hi, hi for those teachings. Those will carry forward to future generations. Up next, Jeff Westesigut from the Cross Lake Cree Nation. He serves as a language consultant and knowledge keeper. He dedicates much time to helping people overcome personal challenges through ceremonies, traditional medicines, and counseling. He is dedicated to the preservation of the Nehiao language and culture. Jeff recognizes the spirit within the tongue as he interprets the parables within the Nehiao language. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. Thank Creator for, for today and uh, the gifts that we still carry today and that knowledge. I uh, was thinking a lot about 
we tend to translate a little bit different than what the English term knows about this bear. They call it a bear, and, and if you ever look it up, it, it's, they refer to it as a carnivore, like a, a real scary, they instill fear in that term bear. What really connects us to, to, to Mashwa is that connection to the land and to the medicines. Long time ago, my granny, my grandmother, my Koko was still alive. She had shared a story with me on what the connection to the laws of the land were. And a lot of times we, we tend to articulate and translate things a little bit different than the English language. Where the uh, Mashkwa came from, it evolved from the grass and it talks about the Mashkosi. That's what we call the grass. And that's where his life came from, Mashkosik. Hence the word Mashkosis, Mashkwa. And those terms, I want to be able to highlight within the story that, that I want to share with you from my, my grandmother had told me the story about Mashkwa. My grandmother said that the bear evolved from the grass. And when he arose, he arose four times. The very first one, they referred to this little bear that, that first awoken from the grass. They call him out here in the West, they call him Wagaiwis. Over in the East, they call him Opatsawansis. And there's a reason why they call him Opatsawansis because Epatanaskit, meaning he'll crawl up a little tree and he'll make that thing bend. Ewakinate. Hence the word, this is where they come from, Waginogan, one of the largest thing. When he arose, he had spoke because at one time all the uh, all of creation spoke one language on on Turtle Island. And he said when he woke and, and brought his life from the from the grass, he says, when this little bear awoke, he says, I will follow the eastern waters and I will go give strength to the land for the people to use and utilize. The second one that got up, a black bear rose the second time from the grass and he said, when the second bear, the black bear rose, he says, I will follow the southern waters and I will go give strength to the land for the people to use so that they may be healthy. The third one that arose from that grass he said, Utenina Sagitawak Niga is Sipuetan. Ego Tesi Tepage Muan. O what's here? Tau you have a guitar scamagak. Ego Temisio in Tesipe Mascawa, Tamoga Skino, I see Nigitawi Apachita. Ego Tatao Chiminot. The third bear that arose was the brown bear, the grizzly bear. He says, I will follow the Western waters and I will go give strength to the land for the people to use. For I have enough strength to climb all the mountains and the terrain and I will go give strength to the land. The third one that arose, the fourth one, the last one. Maga, 
ewi papiagik ai sinyak ewi geskino moak tan tege ti sigiwe chaga chago na geshigawe the fourth one arose was the polar bear he says i will go to the northern waters and i will go give strength to the land for the people to use so that they may be healthy but i will not go to sleep i will await for the people and i will show them the pathway back to the star world where they came from that is why when these ones manifested from the grass in the fall time when the medicines are about to go to sleep the grass will lay down that's why the bear mashqua has to go to sleep and lay down too and becomes dormant in hibernation so we this this is the keeper of to a lot of them the, the natural medicines we see it when we say mas masqua mas that's a parable meaning the strength and the power of the land the power and the strength of the land maskawak maskawi see you hear that eh in masqua and maskigi so when we when we uh, acknowledge this bear we call this waigan that big hump on its back and and these are representations of those lodges even the horse has has that has that hump on its back waigan hence the word waginogan they're the carriers of these lodges so when we put up a horse lodge a buffalo lodge a bear lodge and they even have a moose lodge and then i know that the blackfoot people they carry a beaver lodge eh? and uh, these are the ones that, that that are held sacredly and in being able to understand them within your language definitely opens the doorway to that spirituality because when we present to you as a bear the only perception that you're going to create by yourself it's a carnivore i got to be afraid of it this 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 is not about fear it's about respecting distances that they understand when they, that it's about time to hibernate and one of the things that uh, that a bear does is, and i was shown this medicine that they go dig up by the water and it almost looks like a big onion and they call it nepawask is what they call it eh and this bear eats that eats it eh and that's what actually puts him to sleep eh and uh, i i know that in the time when this hibernation when that grass begins to lay down and and we see the grass laying down and uh, that is the time for them to go and hibernate eh and and, and it's a cycle when you take a look at the moons and and i wanted to share one more thing with you pay attention when it comes towards january when 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 the thunderbird comes home in january eh it's going to be warm sometimes you're going to see lightning or rain and what's going to happen is all the willows that we already had a frost already of all the frosting of the willows that were the very first ones to be born in january when you see any kopan chigoge ka maskobani pan chigego ni kogo ni pishiwatte ko meaning when you see the frost of all the trees and the willows that is when the bears are born the cubs are born eh e gotta ka ka pep match chigoge so the first breath of air that the old ones would say when they take they inflate those lungs they they frost up the whole trees the willows and everything so pay attention to that because the land we're able to read the land and also read the sky and that's what our elders taught us say eh? what really connects us to that land is the language so we use a foreign language to the to these things we are not connected anymore and that's why there's such a a, a big movement on with, with, with language so how we extract and use these medicines we have to go back to the origins of language 
And one of the things is the, the laws of the land. And like Daffy was saying, these are the laws of the land that we must share. We have yet to come to that shareness. And uh, I, I don't know what's, what's happening until we're able to break down these walls of, of sharing that knowledge to this land. So with that, I, I just want to stop there. And I want to thank you for lending me your ears today. Hi, hi, Jeff. As you said, with these animals, we have to take care of them. Because if we don't, it's going to be soon after we disappear. We're all connected and we cannot exist without each other. Bears are sacred and a part of our creation stories. I could just listen to you both all day. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to visit Keepers of the Water on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, keepersofthewater.ca. You can listen to the full webinar on our YouTube channel. Take care of yourselves, love yourself and each other. Kinana skompnawao.